Jack here, JBF Music and Guitar Lessons. I'm back with one of these critique videos for you. So essentially, this is an informal analysis, and this is a disclaimer straight from the get-go. I will pause the video. I will talk about what's going on. The original is kind of for entertainment purposes. This video, this new video I've made here, is for educational purposes. So once again, I will pause probably quite frequently. If you just want to watch the original or you want to watch someone watching the original, this is probably not for you. If you maybe want to learn something or get a new insight into the song, then stick around. So just before I jump into this one, I've got a handful of bandmates songs left that were suggested much more than the other songs so any more suggestions put them down in the comments another thing i've been thinking about doing is taking one of their songs and kind of breaking it down in a fairly accessible way probably less guitar oriented so if you'd like to see that and if there's a song in particular you'd like to see that done on then again just fire it down there Okay, uh, another curveball. <laughs> just keep doing this to me. Uh, yeah, okay. Like I say, I'm gonna pause frequently. If you don't like that, this is this is this is the way of things. I'm telling you from the get go. And that's three times I said tonight, so hopefully that's enough to convey the message. There's a lot of cool stuff going on there. There's that um, Arctic kind of breeze, that wind effect. There's a pick scrape in there. I really liked a uh, pick scrape. I've covered them before. You can get it with the eye up there. But basically, you take the pick, you run it against the strings, and because there's enough distortion and gain on the amp, it makes this cool kind of sound. Uh, and they panned it when they did it, which is a trick I love. So if you listen to it, particularly on headphones, you'll hear it, the, the pick scrape kind of move across the audio spectrum, which is just really cool. And they come in here with a kind of Phrygian, sounded much heavier than I was expecting. And I was told this song is a little bit prog, so it's not thrown me too much of a curveball, but I wasn't expecting it to start off quite as dark because their songs have all been pretty um, happy so far, quite a lot of major sounds in them. And the drums are doing some cool syncopated beat as well here. Let's pop it back a few seconds. From a purely genre point of view, this is quite interesting as well, because this is more of like a, a metal riff, like you could hear a metal band doing this, but with the sound of the guitars and the way it's mixed, it's more like a kind of alt-rock or indie band. It's maybe a bit like um, if, if the Arctic Monkeys did like a, an Iron Maiden cover or something like that. Okay, this is more of what I was expecting, the kind of full-on, the kind of upbeat but still slightly uh, yearning sound that they go for. So we're about 30 seconds in, we have this shift from this really kind of downbeat thing to this much more um, upbeat, up-tempo thing. Right, this... this a lot, as, as always with Banmay, this is a very a dense audio thing, there's a, there's a lot going on. The, the, the production here, the mixing, I think could let things be a little bit clearer. It might just be the, um, the video being compressed on YouTube and the audio quality, but the, the symbols are getting a wee bit lost or maybe a wee bit sizzly and things are a wee bit kind of bass heavy. But that, that, that might be an intentional thing because what I'm really getting is this seems to be a bass driven song. There's a lot of that, the guitar, the rhythm is just kind of filling out the audio spectrum a little bit and then it sounded like we had a kind of tapping lick again which she seems to really like to do to add that kind of electronic texture to the to the songs It's really quite manic. There's, there's an awful lot going on here. Like I say, it's just this. Everything feels really kind of compacted together. So what is right? Okay, this is cool. Um, I was getting a wee bit concerned there because there wasn't a huge um 
change in terms of the overall dynamics, in terms of the overall feel between those two last sections. And they've gone to one here that's got this really kind of syncopated groove going on. Let's pop it back. Okay, this is this, this maybe sounds a wee bit like Sting in the Police, if you know that kind of reggae thing going on. This is really slurring the drums there, so she's either doing a triplet or what you call a trasillo. So rather than it being a kind of basic one, two, three, four, if you're triplets, you have like a essentially three notes in the space of four. If you imagine it's, this is the analogy I like to give. If you imagine a circle that's split into to four split into quarters, and if you imagine a circle that's split into to thirds, like the, the, the piece, the, the hippie sign, well the notes combined occupy the same overall value, individually they have slightly different lengths. There's a really cool texture on the lead guitar here and I think what she's done is used uh, an octave pedal to push it up an octave or potentially double what she's doing up an octave as well. If you think of something like um, Radiohead's, uh, is it No Surprises, where it starts off with that really kind of uh, eerie, high, almost like toy-like uh, sound of guitar, it's a similar idea to that in terms of the effects use. So you probably felt it there, uh, with that section change, I'll just pop it back, try to get a bit. But even better, on second listen there, instead of just going from one section to the other, they got that little bass fill. Uh, just dynamically, that's a fantastic thing to do, because it was fairly kind of intense uh, verse there. And to, to give you a slight breather before it goes into the chorus, because if you've just been continually smacked in the face with section after section, it can kind of lose that um, it lose that momentum a little bit. It's a bit like um, if an action film is all action, you, you you might get bored of it by the end. If it mixes in a bit of action with something else, it can keep your engagement a bit more. And yeah, dipping down to that bass solo before coming into the full-on chorus again, great. Cool, I was just thinking about the vocals there, they're pretty rapid fire as well, like a lot of time they'll do the rapid fire things and there'll be more of a call and response thing or a bit slower down. So I think towards the end there that she said one more time, one more time, which is kind of touching on that thing they do, but it's just it's a different flavour from them again, isn't it? <laughs> So I think there um, it sounded like they'd gone to the blues note, which they do quite a bit in their songs. It just adds this nice bit of tension. Um, might have to break that down in the in the, in the next section. Right, uh, so to break down what's going on here, partly why it's because I often say they sound dense, I'm going to try and explain why it does. You've got the drums going on, do that, do do it out. So the drums are doing quite an intense beat. Uh, under that, you've got those back and vocals, the whoa. So that's quite low in the mix, but still adding to this, this kind of sonic juggernaut that they have. The rhythm guitar, um, it's it's there, but it's not incredibly prominent. It is filling out the sound by just kind of doing chords. Then you got this kind of tapping thing, the beep, 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 over the top. You 
can hear the do 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 do. Obviously, you've got the vocals are right front and center, and then the bass is just huge in this song. It's really taking up a lot of space. <laughs> So this feels like it's a kind of nod back to the intro there where they're going for a kind of a more metal thing but again because the guitars aren't that distorted like there's still a heavy overdriven sound it's got this kind of indie band doing metal vibe about it. Okay, that was a cool touch. So uh, underneath the vocals, you hear the lead guitar come in there. I think this is kind of leading into a bit of a solo, or maybe more of a riff bass solo. Let's pull that back. So the solo's kind of starting before the solo section is almost the leading. If you're familiar with my channel, and if you're not, feel free to do the whole subscribe and enable notifications thing. Oh, if you guys are enjoying this, leave a like and a comment as well, it's a huge help for things. But what they've done here is gone half time with the drums, which I've talked about before in a previous Bami video, I'll link to that with the eye up there. But it just gives this real head bobbing kind of vibe to it, this, this extra layer of groove. It's a sort of moment that when you see it live, it just kind of hits you and it makes you want to move with the music. Yeah, and this is quite cool because rather than going off on a kind of uh, shred fury of, uh, of coughing your notes and tapping, she's uh, keeping it more restrained with what you'd call kind of double stops. So you're playing two notes together. It's a bit like something uh, Chuck Berry or if you know Michael Schenker from the Scorpions UFO or something, they might kind of do a bit more kind of groove based, maybe someone like uh, Nuno Betancourt as well. Yeah, cool. So I mentioned an octave pedal and she had it on there as well. So it's either doubling the octave above or below. So it's the same note, either pitched higher or below, uh, when she did what you call a trill going between two notes. So I'll pop that back. On, that doo -loo 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 -loo. She's hammering on and pulling off quickly with this effect on underneath to kind of make it sound bigger. It might not be tapping, what she might be doing is picking the open string and kind of pulling off to it. I would need to see, I'd need to either see it live or listen to it more closely, probably with the headphones on, to really pick that out, so I apologise, I may, I may have misled you there. There's so much, so much going on here. Like when we come into this section here, right? You've got the back and vocals coming in, you've got the drums just going at it, the bass, and then. There's a guitar line. Or something like that. And again, this is the thing with the octave pedal on, so it sounds a bit more maybe like an organ, a bit more synthesizer like. And then the bass and the drum fills just adding kind of an extra little rush before you get to the next to the next bar. I tell you what, I would not like to have to remember <laughs> remember that song and play it live. It's quite an intricate arrangement. Okay, so I was saying near the start, I was thinking about taking one of their songs and kind of analysing it a bit more, because this is honestly a first time here, and I don't. I know some people listen through to them and then sort of feign a reaction. I just think that's a bit weird to do. So it's, it's also difficult to uh, take what's going on and deconstruct it in a slightly more in-depth or meaningful way. So if this is the sort of song that you'd like to see me break down, then do let me know. But on that note, uh, let's get on to the section where I do break stuff down with my guitar in hand. Go 
cool. So the first thing we're gonna look at is that riff. It's a wee bit down in the mix, but it's just got this eerie, cool vibe to it. First thing I want to talk about, rather than the notes, is the kind of tone going on. So to achieve this, I've talked about this before, you can do a thing called pot control. So if I have my volume all the way up and I hit a chord and I hit it kind of hard, I give it a bit of welly. It's like a driven sound. If I roll my tone pot down and play more softly. So with this one, what I did was rolled my volume down to what would maybe be um, six or seven. This doesn't have numbers on it, but if you do, it'd be around there. And picking quite lightly as well, because even at this, uh, volume is still dynamic, so if you pick softly, compare it to hard. And you find with these kind of chords, um, if you pick lightly, it'll be a lot more clear than if you pick hard. So the only thing changing here is how hard I'm picking. There's no pedals or anything on, that's just dynamic playing is what you'd call that. The other thing going on is it sounded like she was using a bit of a pitch shifter. So if I just play the note and then bring it in, and take it off. So basically what it's doing is it's taking this note, keeping it in, but then putting the same note in an octave higher. And when you combine this with this nice kind of chord shape, right, you get this extra kind of sparkle on the top. I think I'd referenced a Radiohead song um, earlier in the video and that's a good kind of point if you've heard that one before it's a similar kind of texture so because I've not seen a live performance of this I'm just going by my ears and what my kind of gut as a guitarist is telling me is going on in terms of the fingering so what you want to do is take your first finger on the seventh fret second on this eighth third on the ninth so the E, G, e B and G string sorry you kind of want that held down more or less throughout you're going to put your little finger on the tenth fret and we're going to pick the E string the G and the B and you're going to move your little finger to the 10th fret on the B. Then because this finger's off the E string, we're going to pick the E string, which will be that 7th fret. So you have... Then you're going to go back to the B string, on this 10th fret still, to the G. So... Back to the B. Then you're going to lift up your little finger so you can get that 8th fret on the B little finger back down to the 10th, up to that 7th fret on the E, back down to the B string, that 10th fret, and then the 9th fret on the G. I'll just play that a bit more slowly because that might be easier to follow than me saying all the strings and the fret numbers. And a bit slower again. So because you're holding all these notes down, they ring into each other and they get that really lovely kind of haunting sound. In terms of music theory, what we're doing here is playing an E minor, and I didn't dissect what was going on underneath, I think there's different changing chords, but because we're playing in the same key, we don't necessarily need to follow them, we can just play a riff like this and it'll sound cool. But you've basically got an E minor 7, so you've got an E here, a G, a B, and then a D, so that'd be the root, the flat third, the fifth, and the flat seventh of your E minor 7 type chord that she's outlining. And then the note that's getting added in here, an A which is a fourth or an eleventh so you've kind of got this minor seven um, add eleven whenever that note comes in and that's what's helped creating this kind of luscious spacey vibe but by itself a minor seventh sounds kind of quite spacey anyway but when you add in that eleventh on the top you get even more space in this and combine that with the effect that's on the kind of nice sound of the guitar where instead of being really distorted it's just got a little bit of crackle on it. All the things come together to produce this sound. Cool, and that's the next part I'm going to break down here. So this is a lead that's in the chorus. It's quite quiet in the mix, but it's there. And to the best of my hearing, I think this is what's going on. So this is the thing that I thought might have been tapped or might have been using the open string. I think it's using the open string. It could be tapped, it might not be. 
Again, I'm not entirely sure how she's going to finger this, so I'm going to show you the way I played it there in the intro, and then also talk about different ways you could potentially play it. So what we're doing is we're up at this fret here, 17th on the E, and we're just going to pull off, and then same idea on the 15th, going off to the E, again with the 14th, off to the E, and to the 12th. So in, in classical music, this is a technique called pedal point. So we keep returning to this note in between this open E string. So because we're going did do did do did do did do that lower note's always the same, you can call that pedal point. So but a, but a bonus bit of information there. And then after that, what I did here was went down to the 17th fret on the B and then pulled that off. So, then going back up the way we came, so back to 11, up to the open, 14, pull off to the open, 15, pull off to the open, and again 17. So I'm just picking once, pull off, and you just kind of loop that at this lightning blitzkrieg speed that it's at. Another way this could be done is by moving this note here to here. So it's the same note, just played in a different place, and that way you'd have... So exactly the same, except when we get to here, we're hitting that, pulling off to the open E, and coming back up. This is the way I thought it was originally played, but in all honesty, because um, I've just kind of started learning this, like I kind of struggled to get it clean and get this position shift, because you can do these notes all in one position, but then having to come down here and back up to there, I'm kind of struggling to get that clean. It didn't sound too bad there, but I wasn't really getting it before. So that's why I opted to move the note there. There's a few other things you could do here as well. It might not even be picked at all. It might just be totally legato. So you can make sure you mute these strings. You can rest a finger over them or whatever, and you can just hammer on. You can do that. If you're doing that, you probably want more gain because you can hear here. It's not as prominent the sound. So if you're picking, and the other thing that I kind of mentioned is you could tap it as well, which also kind of makes sense to me because we don't have to do position shift with that. So you could tap 17th, go off to the open, hammer on that. So all I'm doing with my thumb here is resting on these strings so they don't ring out, and then hammering on from nowhere, pulling off. So if I go through that, you'd have a tap, pull off, hammer from nowhere, pull off, same idea. Yep. Well that's the final thing as well, on the last time round you want to slide out of that note on the 14th fret, so when you go and slide down and out, and that's the lick. Okay, so what's going on here? Well, basically, I'd edited the video, I'd exported it, and I was looking for a thumbnail, essentially, and then I realised there was an instrumental version of this song, which, in all fairness, I think you guys did tell me about it, but I forgot which song it was uh, in reference to. And while I couldn't find the original song, I did think, well, why don't I check out reaction to see if that uh, guitar part is featured at all? And it was, it was much more clear in the mix, it was much more present. So what I've done now is worked out the correct way of playing that, at least, I think. So I figured I'd keep in the wrong method and put up a kind of disclaimer text, just to show that, like, when you're listening to these things, you know, I'm, I'm not going to get it right every time, I'm going to make mistakes and that kind of thing. But if I do, I will be more than happy to own up to them and correct them. So what we've got going on here is trem picking, and this did pop into my head, but I couldn't hear the part clearly enough to determine that's what was going on. It didn't sound like it was to me, but in the instrumental version it's nice and full in the mix, nice in the front and centre, you can hear much better. So essentially you're just picking... I think the tempo is about 180, 170, so that'll be like 16th note, so you just continue doing that, and then this hand's doing all the kind of magic over the top. So I'll play it slowly and then I'll kind of break down what's happening. So I'll try and play that a bit slower again, but I might speed up by mistake because these are the sort of licks that once you lock them into muscle memory they're kind of easier to just blitz through than to play slowly, but here we go. OK, 
cool. And what I'll do is just break it down now. It's basically one pattern and another pattern, then you just rotate between them. So the first one you're picking the seventh fret, but up at this high speed because we're kind of trend picking it. When it looks like this, it's maybe easier to think about where the notes actually come down in terms of the beat. But you got this kind of rhythm. For the first one, and in between all those notes, we've got the open E string. So you're picking the seventh fret on the E string, open three times, seven, open, 15, open, 14, open, 15, open, seven, and then open again. So that part. You're up to the 17th fret. Open, 15, open, 14, again open, 15, open. Then down to 10 and open, 12, open, 7, and then you open to round up the bar three times. So that bar. Second time around things change a bit, so you got the 7th fret on the E, open E three times. Same thing again, so 7th fret once, open E three times. 7th fret once, and then open E. Then we're going to go up to the 15, open, 14, open, 15, open. So that far. And then this is the part that I pretty much got right, this is the part I could hear better, we're going down. So 17 open, 15 open, 14 open, 12 open, 10 open, 12 open, 14 and you slide down out of that. Now what, this actually makes it slightly easier to play because before I was complaining that I found kind of, uh, if you're hitting it once and pulling off, harder to keep it clean. But if you're doing this kind of trend picking, because you're picking the note in between, it kind of gives you a bit more time to move between the notes and keep it fluid. So I'll play that whole second half a bit slower. We have... And really quickly in terms of the theory, we've got this easy kind of pedal underneath. It's not exactly a pedal point because we're not going to um, alternate in between the notes, but it is a pedal of sorts. And we're just going through the scales. We've got like the fifth here. Got the third, flat third here, second, got the root here, got the flat seventh. But you're still kind of outlining a major uh, minor seventh to some extent. And when we go up to here, we're just adding in the fourth, which I suppose touches on that um, lovely sus four kind of chord we had. The uh, what was it that one? In the in the other section, of course, there's the second here as well. But in a nutshell, she's just playing notes from the key. And it, it just sounds awesome, doesn't it? Check out that video for more bandmade stuff or that one for my reactions playlist. Hit subscribe if you want to keep up to date with the channel and all that kind of good stuff. But take it easy, guys. Have a good one.